Hello and welcome to State of the Union. I'm Stefan Grobe in Brussels. This week, we witnessed deep divisions between EU member states over the ongoing conflict in the Middle East once again. The reason was the decision by the International Criminal Court to seek arrest warrants against Israel's Prime Minister and his defense chief, as well as against three Hamas leaders. Reactions range from welcoming the court's decision, as did Belgium, France and Slovenia, to rebuking it in various forms, as did Germany, Austria and the Czech Republic. The disunity was also on display when Ireland and Spain, together with Norway, moved to recognize Palestine as an independent state, something that is being discussed for quite a while. Quite frankly, because we must keep the hope, the dream and the destination of a two-state solution alive at a time when, sadly, others are working to undermine that. Ireland would have much preferred to have done this as part of a peace process, but we can't wait forever. Um, it's an awful long time, many decades since the Oslo Accords. There is more European unity regarding Ukraine on the surface. But when it comes to arms shipments, action hasn't always matched words. Western allies are taking too long to make key decisions, Ukraine complained, at a time when Russia seems to be stepping up its offensive in the northeast. In the face of relentless Russian attacks, Germany's foreign minister during a visit to Kiev warned that the country needed to boost its air defenses, with Western help, of course. Some of the rockets and missiles could be uh, brought down by air defense, but obviously not all of them. And this is why I'm calling worldwide uh, to increase the air defense support. Watching the war very closely is Moldova, a country sandwiched between EU and NATO member Romania and Ukraine. The former Soviet Republic has long been defying warnings from Moscow that closer Western integration could see it face Ukraine's fate. Right. Nonetheless, Moldova signed a defense partnership with Brussels this week, <laughs> this a step designed to tie the country closer to the EU. The country is a candidate to join the bloc and formal talks are expected to begin next month. Joining me now is Daniela Vidaiku, executive director of the Moldova Soros Foundation. Welcome to the program. Thank you. So how significant are the EU accession talks for the Moldovan public? How do people see EU membership? Well, the upcoming intergovernmental conference to be held in the nearest future is the most important political event for the pro-European Moldovan population, while the opening of the European negotiation is uh, very much expected by the population. In the recent years, Moldova is an inclusive society, managed to achieve very good milestones in implementing national and domestic uh, reforms so that the country and the society is transformed and the negotiations Association should really move forward to be reversible. For Moldovans, as you asked, both for those that are living in the country, but also for those that are living abroad in the EU member states, holding already the European citizenship, the European integration of Moldova is very important as a development plan and the most probably important strategic plan for since its independence. We hear a lot about Russian disinformation. Um, tell us what's happening. Well, unfortunately, Moldova is one of the most affected European countries by the Russian propaganda, which is very much coordinated by the Russian parties, the Russian media, the Russian uh, social networks and influencers. Since the Russian invasion into Ukraine, Moldova started to face a very complicated, uh, complex and aggressive hybrid war that undermines its development, its social cohesion, independence and security. And the goal actually is to increase is the uh, population polarization and skepticism towards the European integration of the country and to keep the country under the Russian control, actually. So the fake news, the disinformation, the Russian manipulation and interference target social or economic or political Moldovan vulnerabilities to keep the country in poverty and to undermine the European development of the country. There is a constitutional referendum coming up and there will be elections in October. How are these campaigns going? To what extent is the EU part of the debate? 
Yes, indeed, in October 2024, Moldova is going to host two important electoral events. Both events are considered to be uh, very relevant and very crucial for the Moldovan future and are going to happen in the same day. Uh, we have the pro, uh, European government and the president uh, who announced her intention to run for the second mandate, civil society and media who are supporting the European integration. And we have the pro-Russian parties and pro-Russian media that are are trying to convince the population not to go to the referendum, to boycott the referendum, or to vote against the referendum. All right, Daniela Vidaiku, Executive Director of the Moldova Soros Foundation, thanks for coming on the show today. Thank you very much and good luck for your elections. We wouldn't be talking about democracy in Europe if it hadn't been for one single historic event. I'm talking about the Allied landings in Normandy that were the beginning of the end of World War II and the liberation of Europe from the Nazis. In a few weeks, the Allies will mark the 80th anniversary of D-Day as a tribute to the fallen and to surviving veterans. The British Royal Mint unveiled a commemorative coin depicting soldiers disembarking from a landing craft. More than two million soldiers, sailors, pilots, medics and other people from a dozen countries were involved in Operation Overlord. And nearly 160,000 troops hit the codenamed beaches of Utah, Omaha, Gold, Juno and Sword on June the 6th, 1944. A few days ago, to mark the coin's release, its design was recreated in Normandy on Gold Beach. Quite appropriate. At 35 meters across, the sand art served as a reminder of the bravery and sacrifices of Allied troops for a few days. The coin, on the other hand, is permanent. That's it for this edition. I'm Stefan Grober. Thank you for watching. Have an excellent week.